Now, before I start introduction, I want to tell us what is going to happen on this presentation. Two things are going to happen. We have a video, a pre-recorded video session, and then we have a presentation. I'm going to present the audience to us and tell us who our audience is about them. I'll start by presenting the first speaker, which is Her Excellency Toin Saraike. As the founder and present president of the World Bank Founder Africa, WBFA, Her Excellency Mrs. Toin Ojora Saraike is a global advocate for women's and children's health and empowerment with two decades of advocacy covering reproductive, maternal, newborn child and adolescent health, ending gender-based discrimination and violence, and improving education, socioeconomic empowerment, and community livelihood in sub-Saharan Africa. Mrs. Saraki is inaugural and emeritus global goodwill ambassador for the International Confederation of Midwives, ICM, special advisor and member of the Independent Advisory Group, IAG, of the World Health Organization Regional Office for Africa, was named by Davex as UHC Global Champion as well. She's also the UNPA Nigeria Family Planning Champion. She's also the Save the Children's Newborn Health Champion for Nigeria. She's so passionate about BD3, passionate about women's health, and is a global champion for the White Ribbon Alliance for Save Motherhood. Ms. Saraki is a member of the International Steering Committee, ICPD25, and was appointed the inaugural World Head Organization Foundation Global Head Ambassador in 2022. Ms. Saraki currently sits on the board of trustees for Seed Global Health, the Leadership Council of African Reach, and the Global Advisory Board of World Humanitarian Forum. Yeah, she's an amazing person. She's passionate about maternal She's passionate about re revolutionizing the maternal health in Nigeria. So she's into many things as as far as 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 far, as far as, uh, women's health is concerned. Together with two other co-authors, who will be two presenters, Dr. Pragya and Miss Eunice, who I'm going to discuss about them just before their presentation. I'm going to share the pre-recorded session by Her Excellency. Midwives healthcare colleagues and distinguished guests. Happy International Day of the Midwife. My name is Toyn Saraki, founder and president of the Wellbeing Foundation Africa, a non-governmental organization based in Nigeria with the aim of improving maternal, newborn and child health outcomes through midwifery-led frontline programming and global advocacy. And as the inaugural Global Goodwill Ambassador of the International Confederation of Midwives and the World Health Organization Foundation's inaugural Global Health Ambassador, it is with great pleasure that I extend a warm welcome to the virtual International Day of the Midwife, a 24-hour online conference centered on the 5th May Day for midwives and anyone interested in childbirth. As we gather virtually from all corners of the globe, United by our shared commitment to improving maternal health outcomes, let us take a moment to reflect on the profound impact of midwifery in shaping the future of childbirth and beyond. This year, as we commemorate the International Day of the Midwife, our theme resonates deeply with the essence of sustainable midwifery, caring for tomorrow's world. Indeed, as the guardians of life's most sacred moments, midwives hold the key to nurturing a future where every mother and child receives the care and support they deserve while safeguarding the health of our planet for generations to come. Central to our discussions today is the imperative of respectful maternity care, an ethos which is the heart of sustainable midwifery. Respectful maternity care is a guiding principle that highlights the importance of treating every woman with dignity, compassion and empathy throughout her childbirth journey. It's about honoring her autonomy, respecting her choices and upholding her rights, regardless of her background or socioeconomic status. At the Wellbeing Foundation Africa, our flagship Mancare 360 program is aimed at goal three of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, good health and well-being for all. And our WBFA midwives work to improve maternal health by re promoting respectful maternity care for all women during pregnancy, childbirth 
and in the time after birth, as we see the link between pregnant women and their primary health givers as vital to their health after delivery and to that of their newborn. Mammacare 360 delivers care in line with the World Health Organization recommendations for pregnant women to increase the number of contact with healthcare providers throughout their pregnancy from four to at least eight. Mammacare 360 is bridging an identified gap in achieving the best outcomes by making the mother our premium partner in her own outcome through education and awareness in birth preparedness. The Mammacare 360 Birth Preparedness Program of Antenatal and Postnatal Education uses tools such as emergency obstetrics and newborn care, client-held personal health records, PHRs, and respectful maternity care, RMC, to empower the mother by engendering health information and education during that key 11-month antenatal and postnatal nest and nurture period. Alongside this, through the development and distribution of the now ubiquitous clean delivery mama kit, which has been adopted, replicated and amplified so widely across the country, we ensure that every pregnant woman has sanitary and sterile delivery materials with her to encourage safe hospital deliveries. Furthermore, as we champion respectful maternity care, we must also recognize the integral role of mental health in maternity care. The journey to motherhood is a profound and transformative experience, one that can be accompanied by a myriad of emotions, from joy and excitement to fear and uncertainty. Yet all too often, the mental health needs of mothers are overlooked or marginalized. Beyond the physical aspects of care, midwives are uniquely positioned to address the holistic needs of expectant mothers, including their mental health. Maternal mental health is an essential component of overall well-being during the perinatal period, impacting not only the mother, but also the child and family dynamics. Midwives can provide compassionate support, guidance and resources to help mothers navigate the emotional challenges that often accompany pregnancy and childbirth. By promoting mental wellness and early intervention for issues such as postpartum depression and anxiety, midwives contribute significantly to the long-term health and happiness of both mothers and their families. Their expertise in fostering and nurturing and supportive environment empowers women to embark on their journey into motherhood with confidence and resilience. The Wellbeing Foundation Africa is proud to be a long-standing technical policy advocacy and planning partner to the Nigerian Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. And most recently, we have developed an integrated Nigeria's perinatal mental health checklist within the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency's Maternal and Child Health MCH Handbook, highlighting the shared commitment to improving access to primary, secondary, and tertiary mental health and well-being services for all people in Nigeria through the structured unification of national policy efforts towards achieving universal health coverage for mental health and encouraging full implementation of the provisions of the National Mental Health Act of 2021. Today, as we action RMC and our work towards improving maternal mental health, let us also recommit ourselves to ensuring that every mother receives the quality care she deserves and strive to create environments that foster resilience, offer support and break down the stigma surrounding maternal mental health. As we navigate the complexities of childbirth in an ever-changing world, let us draw inspiration from the resilience and dedication of midwives everywhere. Together, we have the power to shape a future where every birth is a joyous occasion, every mother is empowered, and every child thrives. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering dedication to the noble profession of midwifery. Your tireless efforts, compassion, and advocacy are the bedrock of maternal health, and it is through your collective action that we will continue to make positive strides. Thank you, and may this virtual International Day of the Midwife be a source of inspiration and collaboration as we forge ahead on our shared work stream towards sustainable midwifery and maternal well-being. Happy International Day of the Midwife.
Dr. Pragya and Ms. Yunis. Dr. Pragya is a dedicated public health professional with a profound passion for maternal and child health and nutrition initiatives. She's a registered member of the Dental Council of India with master degrees in health management and diverse professional experience across different tiers. She, is currently, she currently holds the esteemed position of global projects. She has worked with the state government to strategic, strategically devise health initiative tailored to support pregnant women. Dr. Pragya, through her experience as unique skill set, she's passionate and motivated to work for children's health to create meaningful, sustainable impact in their lives, as she believes every child has a right to enjoy the same opportunities to grow, be healthy, and, and develop well. Now, Ms. Eunice, who is also a co-author in, in, in this presentation, which is the second bit, like I mentioned earlier, the PowerPoint. Eunice Alice Great Akigwe is a digital midwife working for the foundation. She's a registered nurse midwife with over 17 years of experience, had a nursing education and midwifery education in Nigeria. She went further to back a degree in nursing science from the prestigious Edinburgh Napier University, Scotland, England, United Kingdom. Her passion to impart women with the right information led her to the Wellbeing Foundation Africa. She currently works with the Wellbeing Foundation as a digital midwife. So in the next presentation, Dr. Pragya and Eunice are going to take over the presentation and take us through all the success story with the Mama Care 360 program. So I'm going to hand over to Dr. Pragya. Dr. Pragya, you have the floor now. Take Continue with the presentation, please. Thank you, Elima. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, first of all, I would like to say hello to everyone for joining this virtual conference on uh, International Day of Midwifery. I'm honored to be here to discuss a topic that is very close to my heart, uh, the pivotal role of midwifery in fostering respectful maternity care and supporting mental health, particularly through Wellbeing Foundation Africa's flagship program, that is Mama Care 360. So without further ado, I'll start the presentation speaking a bit about the organization and then the program which we are implementing through midwives, which are being led by the midwives. So Wellbeing Foundation Africa is committed to enhancing health outcomes for women, infants, and children in Nigeria and beyond. Established in 2004 by Her Excellency Toy Nojara Saraki, the WBF aligns its efforts with the Sustainable Development Goals with particular focus on SDG 3, that is Good Health, SDG 4, ensuring quality education, SDG 5, fostering gender equality, and uh, SDG 6, establishing sustainable wash infrastructure, as well as SDG, SDG 17, that is Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Goals. Now, WPF is also committed to accelerate progress towards achieving the ICPD three zeros, which are zero unmet needs for family planning and services, zero preventable maternal and infant deaths, and zero sexual and gender-based violence, including early and focused post-marriage, as well as female genital mutilation. Next slide, please. Mama K360 program approach. So the Mama K360 program, which is the flagship pro program of uh, WBFA, uh, it delivers cares in line with the World Health Organization recommendations 2016 for pregnant women that says to increase the uh, point of contact of the mothers to the healthcare facilities and to the medical professionals uh, in the antenatal uh, visits, uh, to increase the antenatal visits from four to eight. The Mama Care 360 program also aligns with goal three of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which aims to ensure good health and well-being for all. Upholding the respectful maternity care as a fundamental human right, WBF advocates for the dignity and autonomy of women during childbirth through Mama Care 360 program. Mama Care 360 brings skilled midwives directly to the communities, ensuring access to quality prenatal, childbirth, and postnatal care ultimately reducing maternal and infant mortality rates. Next slide, please. So the Mama Care 360 program is, I would say, is a community-based all-around program for the support of uh, pregnant and nursing mothers. Uh, and that ensures pregnant mothers have access to qualified midwives and uh, the coach midwife, which we say it in our organization, during all stages of pregnancy, through delivery, and until the child is of five years. Each coach midwife caters a number of women 
in their area, which allows them to deliver the personalized education and support, nurturing a culture of respectful, client-centered maternal care. The support of the coach midwife to the mother allows a continuous training to reinforce environmental hygiene, educate infant and young feeding practices, uh, perinatal mental health, emotional health, and thereby strengthening the family and community to be informed partners in healthcare and service delivery. Mama Care 360 program also bridges an identified gap, achieving best health outcomes by making mother a premium partner in her own care through empowerment by education and birth preparedness. On to the next slide. So what is Mama Care Antenatal and Postnatal Education Program? This is Mama Care uh, uh, WBFA's flagship program that aims to reduce Nigeria's high rates of maternal and child mortality. And this program is particularly led by our qualified to the global standards midwives. These sessions are held weekly and they are currently implement, uh, are currently being implemented in five of the Nigerian states. That is, the, those are Lagos, Kwara, Abuja, Cross River and Ocean. Midwives provide practical information, advice, education on healthy practices and emotional support to prepare pregnant women for safe childbirth and proper newborn care. Topics covering but not limited to maternal, newborn and child health, postnatal periods, newborn nurturing, birth registration, immunization, breastfeeding, nutrition, perinatal mental health, prevention of child marriage, retention of girls in education, eradication of gender violence, etc. are discussed in our classes. Next slide, please. Midwives with their close and trusting relationship with the mother are well positioned in identifying the early signs of mental health concerns. And therefore, they are in best position to provide support and referral services to address them. Midwives, we believe that midwives within the Mama Care 360 program prioritize mental uh, health by offering the compassionate support, facilitating the open dialogues between the mothers and the midwives and implementing mental wellness strategies. Their commitment to holistic care empowers mother to navigate emotional challenges during difficult times, during this uh, whole pregnancy period as well and the postnatal, fostering a nurturing and a safe environment for both mother and child's overbeing. Their holistic approach ensures not only the physical well-being, but also the mental well-being of the mothers. And this is, can you please move back to the previous slide? This is a mental health checklist, uh, uh, mental health well-being checklist for the mothers, which has been used by the WPFA midwives to assess uh, what is the condition of the mother in that time period. If So this has been devised by WBFA. And it has a color coding which says whether it can be uh, whether the mother if has any mental health issues or emotional support if she needs how to address them and at what level to address them. So we have color coded here, and this is being used by the midwives, uh, which says whether uh, to address the uh, issues there or whether the uh, mother has to be referred to any higher facilities like tertiary care facilities. Next, please. Talking about the impact of Mama Care 360 program, we have till now reached more than 250 healthcare facilities, which includes private as well as public facilities. We have uh, implemented this program in seven states, uh, Lagos, Kwara, Abuja, Cross River, Ocean, uh, uh, Kaduna, and uh, we have reached to more than, uh, over more than 250,000 mothers. Talking about the Talking about the rest of the impacts, so we have seen through the implementation of the mama care antenatal and postnatal uh, classes uh, in the healthcare facilities, there has been 80% increase. We have observed that there has been an 80% increase in the women's attendance to the antenatal visits. Uh, improved access to quality maternal health care services for women has also been seen. There has been increased awareness and acceptance of respectful maternal care practices, leading to positive birthing experience for mothers enhanced mental health support for new mothers, and the capacity of midwives and healthcare workers is also being regularly uh, built up to engage the pregnant women and to provide emergency obstetric and newborn care for mothers. Next slide, please. Mama Care Plus Digital Midwifery is an extension of the Mama Care program, uh, which was created for seamless information dissemination and real-time emergency response by WBFA midwives to empower mothers 
with information in relation to pregnancy, child uh, birth, newborn care, labor, postpartum, outside classes, home visits, and community visits. It's a 24-7 health education and counseling service platform, which uh, uh, mostly, uh, which is by, by utilizing the messaging mobile application, instant messaging mobile application, that is WhatsApp. So initially what started as a single WhatsApp group uh, with a small number of mothers, uh, now we have transformed and blossomed into a vibrant uh, online community, community and an com uh, online family, um, which has uh, where we have like 31 WhatsApp groups and uh, with more than 9,800, around 9,840 members in all the implementing states. Next slide. Mama K Niku Plus is another program that promotes and supports breastfeeding among newborns who are in uh, intensive care unit. So here our trained midwives addresses breastfeeding challenges in premature infants by offering Niku specific lessons to the mothers, assistance with Kangaru mother care and correct breastfeeding techniques, thereby empowering the, them to make informed decision and fostering a supportive environment for successful breastfeeding. So the new Niku moms often feel overwhelmed and exhausted uh, because they're worried about their uh, baby's uh, well-being. So here comes our midwives who help them to navigate to, through these early days, educating, supporting, answering their questions during these critical days. And through this intervention, we have been able to reach more than 1,800 mothers and which have benefited 2,500 babies till now. Next slide, please. Now I would uh, like to hand over it to, to Miss Eunice so, so she can go through the success stories. She's the lead midwife, as already introduced by Halima. Uh, Miss Eunice? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Can we hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you actually, Eunice. All right, good afternoon. So uh, thank you, Dr. Pragya. Um, Happy Virtual International Day of May Drive to us all. Uh, the success story for WBF, we have a lot of success story with regards to Mama Care and all our programs that we run in uh, the World Bank Foundation Africa. But we just speak a little of it, just few, few of this success story to discuss. So one of it is uh, that um, of Mrs. A, initials, just for confidentiality purpose. Um, it's a, it a, a mother, one of our mothers that felt anxious upon learning of the necess, uh, necessity for her preterm baby to be delivered due to her health condition. Uh, her, her primary concern was the survival of her child. According to her, she said, I couldn't even hold my own baby in my hands during the first few days of his life. I was afraid I could enjoy him or do it wrongly. But to be honest, I already prepared myself for a 50-50 chance. So it was like, perhaps baby will survive, perhaps baby will not survive. Thank God that she joined our Wellbeing Foundation Mama Care class. But as the days went by, she said, her perspective shifted as she witnessed noticeable improvement in her baby's condition through the uh, uh attentive care and support given by the WBFA midwives and the NICU nurses. She also mentioned that the breast pump really helped her. Like uh, Dr. Praga mentioned to Rose when she talked about the Mama Care NICU Plus, uh, where breast pump uh, was donated to some of the health facilities, to, uh, to some health facilities to help uh, mother express breast milk, which is very important for uh, the development, healthy development of their babies. So, this mother was part of those that benefited from the breast pump use. So she said uh, the breast pump really helped her conserve energy and deliver enough. Initially skeptical about kangaroo mother's care, she said uh, she found it challenging initially, but yet with continued practice, she said KMC is so comfy and time saving. My baby doesn't disturb once he is here and I just can do whatever I intend to do doing with it's much ease. She expresses profound gratitude to God and to the Mama Care midwife and Nico nurses for their invaluable guidance and care throughout the journey. Next slide, please. So the next um, success story I'll be talking about is about Mrs. Arrow. 
this is from our Ogoja uh, Bam Market unit, that's Cross River State, who had previously undergone cesarean section for her two children, was expecting her third child, despite her doctor's um, recommendation for an elective cesarean section, she firmly believed in the possibility of having a vaginal delivery. During one of our mama care class uh, and her visits to the mama care class, precisely on the 20th, she encountered a WBFA Ogoja midwife who told her, who educated her on cesarean section and mentioned the importance and the, the, the need for her to have cesarean section if uh, the indication for it was there. Following the session, she approached the midwife, shared her dilemma personally, one-on-one -on -one counseling, which is what the mama care midwife, they do a lot. After class, there is time for the mothers and the midwife to interact. After receiving appropriate counseling, she provided her contact information for follow-up support. Regular calls and checks in were conducted to ensure the well-being of both mother and child, because eventually she went through a cesarean section, but an elective one. And the following day, on the 29th, uh, she made her decision of that same month, she made her decision to undergo an elective cesarean section and the following day, March 30, 2024, she had her baby. She was met with encouragement and received all necessary support. Ultimately, she safely delivered a healthy and active baby girl when 3.6 degree uh, kg, both mother and baby are thriving and are doing very well. So on the other side of the slide, we have the comments of uh, mothers on the WhatsApp group. Remember the online mama care classes and then um, we have mothers appreciating uh, the midwives for doing so much, you know, answering their questions, giving them compassionate advices and also ensuring that they are well, checking up on them and ensuring both them and their babies are doing absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Next slide. <clears throat> yeah, the next slide is going to be straight to Dr. Pragya to continue. Yeah, Thank from you. her present you, Lena, presentation. And... Thank you, Ms. Eunice, for those success mm -hmm. stories. Uh, now I will also talk about some of the other programs uh, which our organization has already uh, uh, concluded or are still implementing, uh, which are led by the midwives and their impact. So WBFA Record Total Hygiene Quest program, which is a WASH focused program, the phase one of which has already been completed and uh, which aims to educate, empower and instill healthy hygiene practices, habits among school students, uh, mothers, pregnant and lactating mothers and community members focusing on women. Uh, so through this initiative, uh, we have reached uh, over 34,000 pregnant and lactating women and uh, community members. Then second is the WBFA Medela case. Through this initiative, which, is, which was a partnership between Medela Cares and WPFA, uh, and the project emphasized on improving uh, the lactation care and the use of human milk for infants in the uh, neonatal intensive care unit, we have been able to reach 1,800 mothers and 2,500 babies. Our WPFA Alive and Thrive program uh, was based on behavior change. It was a behavior change program to promote appropriate uh, and um, improving infant IYCF practices, that is infant and young child feeding practice practices through enhanced interpersonal communication, through which we have been able to reach 162,000 mothers till now. Mama Care Plus N, that was a, a program uh, of WBFA along with the UNFPA, uh, which, uh, uh, the, uh, in which there was a provision of reproductive maternal newborn child and adolescent health services with a special focus on maternal nutrition counseling. And so is the name Mama Care Plus N. Then through this program, we have been able to reach more than 300,000 mothers. WBFA Nutrition International Initiative on Zinc LORS uh, is, was a program uh, for scaling up Zinc LORS to improve childhood diet or treatment in Northern Nigeria. Through this program, also our midwives have been able to reach and uh, engage 53,000 mothers and more than 15,000 children. Then the emergency obstetric newborn care was a program to improve maternal and neonatal health by building capacities of healthcare workers in basic and comprehensive emergency obstetrics and newborn care. And this program was being implemented in Quara. Uh, through this program, we have been able to train 723 healthcare workers, including the midwives. 
Dr. Pragi, we have less than five minutes, so I, I want you to summarize as much as you can. Sure. Yeah. Let's move yeah. on to the next Well slide. done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the future direction sustainability, uh, we uh, believe on continuous capacity building of the midwives for better uh, health outcomes of the of society and the community. Then second, we also believe in continued and we do continued advocacy for respectful maternity care and mental health support. And another future direction is the scaling up of the Mama K360 program to more healthcare facilities and the states. Next slide. So in conclusion, midwifery plays a transformative role in promoting respectful maternity care and mental health through initiatives like Mama Care 360 program. And I would definitely say they are the heroes of millions of stories. And by upholding the principle of dignity, autonomy, compassion, midwives contribute significantly to improving maternal health outcomes and overall well-being for mothers and new newborns. We in WBFA believe that midwifery is a vital solution to the challenges of providing high quality maternal and newborn care for all women and newborn infants in countries and all countries. And it is also an effective means to promote the health and well being of women of childbearing age as well as their newborns and families with a potentially rapid and sustained effect on population health outcomes.